Welcome back guys to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing the software side of things and how I the process I use for um, sending a part to my CNC machine and getting the file ready to machine. Um, it's a pretty simple process. I'm going to be using three different softwares, Google SketchUp, Estocam, and Simplify 3D. Now Simplify 3D can be pretty much any software you use, um, say Repetier Host or really any um, machine controlling software. I just have Simplify 3D. It's a great software and I love it. Um, but let's get started on the 3D modeling side of things. Now here we are in Google SketchUp. Google SketchUp is a great software for f quick and easy parts. Um, it can do fairly complicated um, 3D modeling. Um, probably not as much as say Fusion 360 but for the most part it is my go-to software for doing simple parts and I'm just going to be using the, this software in this video. Um, so let's just create a simple part here, um, say a hundred millimeter square. Let's make it 10 millimeters high. It doesn't really matter the thickness because we're going to be exporting as a 2D model um, next. So it doesn't really matter here. Let's just make some holes in it. Oops. Just to show some other features of the um, slicing software. So here we go. We got a model. Let's just select it here. And now I'm going to be using this extension called well, I'm not sure what it's called, but it exports as DXF or SDL files. Basically, you can export a 2D model or a 3D model. Um, SDL files you generally use for 3D printing, DXF for, for 2D carving. So go ahead and click that. We're going to export as millimeters. Click OK. You can export as a polyface mesh. Um, normally, for a 2D model, you just want to use polylines. And then, of course, if you want to do an STL file, you'll select STL. So just go ahead and click polylines or the lines will work as well, so it doesn't really matter. Click OK. Um, save the file to wherever you want. I'm just going to name it test part. And so if you've done it correctly, it should say zero faces exported, 108 lines in this case exported, and zero objects ignored. Um, the reason you don't want any faces is if you have faces, that means you've done it as a 3D model and not a 2D model. Click OK and now we can just close out of this program and that's pretty much it for the modeling side of things now we're gonna move on to Estocam so now that we got our 2D model um, created we're in a software called Estocam. Estocam is free for the most part and by that I mean it's free to use but every time you export a file there's a time limit you have to wait say 30 seconds and every time you export another file you have to wait um, it's usually like 10 seconds longer or 5 seconds longer so it increases every time you export a file that being said I do recommend buying the software and it is a great software especially if you're just a hobby user and you don't want to spend a lot of money on like a really powerful 3D uh, machining software it's a great software to get started and for the majority of 2D cutting and some 3D cutting or 3D machining I should say um, it'll be it'll be great and you probably won't max it out right away so here we are in Estocam we have our 2D model loaded you can see the outer perimeter and the two circles around the inside and up here we have our tool list over here we have the number of tool in this case one the name which is in this case eighth inch and the diameter which is 3.18 millimeters the Z step this means how deep of a cut or how deep of a pass this tool can take. I mean you can double click and edit any one of these as you can see this is your feed rate on the X and Y and this is the feed rate on your Z up and down. This is your spindle RPM now I don't have a variable speed um, spindle so I just let it at 24,000 and this right here is if you're doing multiple ta passes side by side, say pocketing, this is how much of the tool is going to be actually cutting. In this case, 45% works just fine for me. And then if you're using a V carve bit, 180 degrees is um, you'll set this to whatever the the V bit is. 
So we can just let that up in the corner. Now if you're going to do multiple passes or set your path depth, you want to edit that right there. And then this for your X and Y speed. And then that for your Z speed. So these are kind of like the three parameters that are mainly adjusted um, for depending on the model and the material you're cutting. So moving on, let's say we want to cut this part out of a um, piece of MDF or something. We're going to come over here and select outside perimeter. You can select inside, but that's going to make your part a whole 3.18 millimeters smaller than what it should be. So now we can come over here, and you can hide, if you just hover over this line, it'll select it, click it, and it'll bring up a toolpath properties menu. Up here, we can just edit the name of the toolpath, the toolpath depth, which we can set, but or it'll ask us later. In this case, we're going to set it to five millimeters because we want it to cut the whole way through our MDF, which in this case is five millimeter MDF. So you can set it to whatever you want. Say we have 10 millimeters um, MDF, you can set it to that. Or if we have 10 millimeter MDF and we set this to five, it will only cut halfway through it. So um, this is just basically the depth of the toolpath from the top of the material. So let's just set it for f to five right now. Moving on, you can set the start level. If we were starting in a pocket that was five millimeters deep, uh, and we left this at zero, we'd be cutting five millimeters of air. We wouldn't be cutting anything, so we could set the um, difference right here. The allowance, which is um, pretty much adjusting the tolerances. The machining order, which we'll want to do this last, so we can just set it to a random number, say 10. We can add holding tabs to it. In this case, it'll be the tab length. Um, we can add the height of the tab right here. If you set it to full, it'll be the full thickness of the material, in this case 5 millimeters, or if you just click it, it'll take it to a default of 2 millimeters. So over here we can click this and add holding tabs, and we can click anywhere around the perimeter and add a tab. So we've added four tabs to hold the part, which is probably going to be plenty. And then the pocketing angle is 90 degrees, obviously. For now, that's complete. We can go ahead and close out of that. And we have our outer perimeter set. Now, if we go to inside, say we want to cut this circle out right here and have a hole going in through the entire part, we can click that. And you can see the toolpath is generated around the inside. This gray line is the center of the bit, and the red is the part that's going to be cut away. So we'll bring up another toolpath properties. We can set set our toolpaths, and in this case, five millimeters, because we want to cut the entire way through the mil, the five millimeter MDF. The start level will let at zero. Allowance will let at zero. The machining order we want to cut this out for. Oh, well, let's cut this out second. Actually, we don't need any holding tabs. Um, and I believe the rest should be good. If this was a square and we wanted to have something fit into that square, we could add overcuts to make sure our corners are cut out um, so the part that we want to fit in there will fit. Otherwise, you'll have rounded corners and you won't have nice and sharp corners. So you can add overcut if you wish. We can also add a start if we want, to, let's say, the bit to start right there and go around this way. We can also add that. So that now that that's done, we can just close that. And let's say we want to pocket this part right here. So we'll click inside again. Click on here. And we're going to come down here. Let's just drag this up here. We're going to click pocket. Uh, we also want to set our machining order to 1 in this case because we want to get this done first. And as you can see, it uh, makes a whole bunch of little whole bunch of passes to pocket this out. Let's say we only po want to pocket this halfway through the material. We'll set our toolpath depths to 2.5. That way it's only halfway through the 5 millimeter MDF. And we can close out of that. So now that we got um, all the and toolpaths generated, we can come down here and click preview. It'll bring up this and you can um, use these buttons to maneuver around. You can see the blue line is the center of the bit. The red dotted lines are the are the um, movement passes that that aren't cutting. And you can see here is our pocketing. So if we just click the up arrow, it'll rotate the whole model. 
if we get a side shot of this, you can see, let's go like that, there we go. You can see how many passes you're going to be doing, and you can see each one of these tabs is going to get in the area that it's not going to get cut and create the tab. You just rotate the part. So yeah, it kind of gives you a preview of what's going to be happening. If you click OK, it'll take you back to the main menu. And at this point, um, we're pretty much done. There are more options. You can um, use the move button to move the model around. You can flip on the um, flip vertically or flip horizontally. You can resize. You can align with certain other parts. You can tile to, if you're creating a batch file. Um, you can also engrave and you can also carve and drill. You can also add text to a model if you wish. But those are all other features, and you can play around with them, um, see what they work, and see how they work. Um, don't be scared; you're not going to screw anything up. So in this case, I have zero zero down here. Now on my machine, zero zero is going to actually be up here because I have my axis, my positive axis is down here, x and y, instead of my negative. That way that my end stops work when I'm doing 3D printing. So just something to be aware of. So it sounds a little confusing, but you'll understand what I mean if the first time you go to set up your CNC machine. If you set it up so 000, zero, zero on all axes is right here, then it should be this is where you'll want to place your bit at the very corner of the part. So just something to be aware of. So back over to setup, you can select your CNC program generation tab and in this case we're going to be using Marlon to Marlin so it's going to be using the Marlin language um, you can add text values commands and then formatting uh, basically the other stuff is just extra accessories in this case um, using a CNC controller USB controller using the Arduino and then you can also use a translation for Estocam and then a help menu right here so if we go back to workspace we can export this model you go up the file and say save CNC program. Click that. And then it will give it a name and path and it'll save it as a G code file as you can see right there. You can also save as um, other fi other types of files in your settings. But for now I use G code and that's what um, my machine uses. So click save. And if you haven't bought the version or the license, it's going to be um, is there's going to be a timer that you have to wait out every time you export another file it's going to get longer for fifty nine dollars um, you can buy the key and then have the free software or you can have the software um, unlimited files and no t waiting time and I do highly recommend buying the software as you can see I haven't bought the software on this um, laptop that I'm making the video on but I do recommend buying the software so as soon as this is done, we will move on to the Simplify 3D side. So here we are in Simplify 3D. Like I said, Simplify 3D is my choice software for controlling my printers and routers, but you don't have to necessarily use Simplify 3D. You can also use Repetier Host and other similar programs. Um, now, we will Im uh, import our file, but you will not be able to see anything right here because it's not a 3D file. Um, go over here and click the gear icon and it will bring up a control menu and of course you want to connect to your machine and then you'll want to import and there should be a tab somewhere to import your G code file and like I said you won't be able to see anything because it's not a 3D model and then you'll be able to and then this print button will be activated and you can go ahead and click it now uh, when setting up your machine and model, you want to, of course, um, secure your material down. Move the drill bit or um, cutting bit to wherever zero, zero is and wherever you want to start the part at. And then over here, you want to zero all the axes. So once you've got everything set up, you just want to click all three of these, and it will set everything to zero, and that's where the program will start from. If you don't, it'll start it'll move to zero zero and then start so you want to make sure you zero all three axes before you start or um, at least adjust the differences to whatever they may be say if you have a um, two millimeter Z offset then you want to make sure this is at two point zero zero but for the most part I like to set my router to where I want to start it from and then click zero 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 
You can also select your tool, which in this case is going to be just tool one. Um, these are pretty much um, the temp sensors and everything is going to be pretty much for um, 3D printers, but I'm going to be using it for a CNC machine as um, as well as extrusion rate. Now you can use the movement speed to increase or decrease your movement speed mid um, program. You can also use here this to jog all your controls and set it up. Temperature plot not going to be going not going to be used. Communication you can see all the commands and then G code library you'll be able to see your your G code file in here. So that's basically the overview of the process I use to cut a simple 2D um, part. It's not very complicated at all. Um, yeah, and it, it works for me, and it gets me very accurate parts. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, check out some of my other videos. And if you've liked this video, hit the like button, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, and see you next time.